You can listen to The Professional Left on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, or at our website, proleftpod.com, where you can also contribute to this podcast. There's a PayPal button at our website, or you can mail us a letter and or contribution at P.O. Box 9133, Springfield, Illinois, 62791. This is the podcast for December 20th, 2019. It's not safe for work. Recorded live from the Cornfield Resistance, where our local impeachment rally was small but lively, it's the professional left with Drift Glass and Blue Gal. impeachment rallies at a bar yeah. rather than on some street corner in the middle of winter well it was in front of uh ray la hood's uh office and i kind of get the the visual of that because he's an asshole who needs to be driven from office you mean like back back bencher ray la hood yeah, yeah, that guy yeah <laughs> he, he and rodney davis both need to be driven from office and he has a prominent office in downtown springfield that looks as well lit and, and good for staging but next impeachment rally in a bar during the summer OK, let's right. just make sure it was nine <laughs> degrees outside. So with wind chill, it was nine degrees, very windy. Uh, but there was a small but lively crowd out there. I was going to say there were like 40 people there <clears throat> yeah, in the, in, at night in winter and it was cold. So yeah. a lot of signs, a lot of uh, cheering and so forth. A lot and, of horns honking, which is, yeah, you know. That's that's uh, Aaron Shock's old office. Yeah. Yeah, there were you know, there were lords a leaping outside, and there were ladies dancing, and so it was very Christmassy. It was a very holiday mm-hmm. festive atmosphere, and I realized this was one among hundreds and hundreds, thousands of demonstrations across the country, which made me feel warm all over. I also celebrated in my own way. There, uh, one of our listeners sent me a, a bottle of very good whiskey uh, last year, year before, a year and a half ago, and I have been very carefully nursing it along, and there was one dram of it left. That I had kept for a special occasion. So to warm myself up on a cold winter night. I yes, you gave me off. a couple of sips. It was really it was good really scotch. Good. It was really, really good. <laughs> really, this really was like good. ridiculously good. And it was um well worth uh it was it was appropriate to the moment. Right. Right. Um, now do you remember last week <clears throat> when we talked to Jay Rosen? But before we talked to Jay Rosen, we had uh our exciting episode introduction where we implied that our podcast uh, that every single Trump supporter at DJ's Cafe Diner has been interviewed twice. Do you remember that, Blue Gal? It was a week ago. I remember that was like our opening. Yeah. Every single Trump supporter at D&GJ's has been interviewed twice. Interviewed, by interviewed twice. Meet the Press and New York Times, <laughs> right? right? Well, <laughs> uh, I must confess we were wrong. Uh, oh, no. <laughs> yes, I, we were wrong. Because Thursday's local state journal register went to where, Blue Gal? To DJ's interview who, Blue Gal? Yes. <laughs> Let me Trump read some. Voters. Let me read from some selected, uh, some selected uh, stuff. W- the thing that makes this especially funny is that I went to a local media panel today, and the same columnist who wrote this column was fielding questions about why the why little people like the Joe the meat cutter in Nebraska is never interviewed when it comes to national issues, and I just cracked up because it's like, no, you literally did just that. You. You literally did just go do the thing that we mocked the New York Times for doing and the Washington Post for doing. Now, granted, this is a local reporter and it's a local cafe, so it sort of makes sense. But uh, magic ruralism is real and interviewing uh, know-nothing Republicans at diners is real and it's a whole art form. And here we go. Quote, at this point, it's looking like just a political stunt that the Democrats are pulling to ride out the 20 election 2020, said Ryan Schaefer of Petersburg, who was dining with co-workers at, yes, D&J's Cafe, uh, West Laurel Street. The financial officer at Destiny Church, by the way, at Destiny Church, uh, it's a crazy right-wing church where the pastor packs uh, heat during the sermon. Uh, <laughs> no kidding. Said he doesn't necessarily identify with the party because, you know, he's an independent. But he thinks it's clear that, quote, there's no proper impeachable offense. I actually watched a lot of the hearings. and The hearings were almost silly to continue when they were all falling apart and honestly seemed dam- more damaging to the Democrat Party than to the Republican Party. So there you go. He's an independent. You can just see where this is going. Now, Ron Parrish, who's 80 and a former state worker, questioned the fairness of Democrats and Republicans on the impeachment issue. I think this is a little overblown. I think, wait for it, both of them are not coming to the table fairly. 
Now, Parrish said he voted for Trump in 2016 and hasn't determined if he'll do so again in 2020. You know why, Blue Gal? Because he's an independent. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> But asking, and, and he's he's eighty years old, so he he remembers voting for Nixon twice. Oh yeah, right? Nixon. I voted for Nixon twice, then I became an independent, and then I voted for Reagan twice, and then I became an independent, and, independent, and I voted and for Bush, Bush and became twice. an independent. <laughs> an independent. And I went to the bathroom for about a year, and then came out, and this black guy was in the White House and freaked me the fuck out. So now I'm an independent again. Um, Bev Smith says the president asking the Ukraine president to investigate the Bidens crossed a line. Uh, she doesn't think it's okay because I don't think it's something that we should be pulling from another country to say, please go ahead, check this dude out, because dude is something that, you know, young people say. Mm -hmm. uh, if he's not really good, let me know so I can use dirt on him. The pro-Catholic was undecided on impeachment, even after she said pro -life all that. Pro-life Catholic. Yeah. Saying that. She was raised Democrat, but finds it, quote, difficult to identify with the party. You know what? I'll bet if you asked her, she'd say, I'm an independent. Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. uh, Judy James, 77, says the president probably stepped too far in his request to Ukraine's leader. Uh, she was also at DJ Cafe. The Republican, she's a Republican and former school insurance company worker, says she voted for Trump in 2016 and will do so again. She opposed the impeachment movement. He's a businessman, not a politician. I just like somebody different from other politicians in there. He gets into trouble. He He's probably done that his whole life. He doesn't know any different. So, yes, I elected a serial criminal knowing that he doesn't know the difference between right and wrong because I'm a fucking idiot. No. She need, and, as I said many times, she needs to have her teeth drilled by right. not a dentist. Right, not a dentist. I don't trust those yeah. dentists, you know, the big lobbyists and all the money and so forth. So you know. these are and if actual... makes a mistake. That's just my dentist, not dentist being not a right. dentist, you know. Right. And I'm sure by 2021, she'll be an independent. I'm independent. sure all these people will be fucking independents. And uh, this is this is where we live. Now, mind you, yeah. the article goes on further. It goes to a, another coffee shop across town where they interview one lone Democrat. <laughs> And well, and lovely. this country is divided by yeah. where we get our coffee. There's no doubt about it. DJ's is an old Republican institution. Yes, it so, is. And the, the downtown places that have opened in the past five years are not. Yeah, the so, breweries and the coffee shops and the, the slightly yeah. hippie-leaning joints are not, you know, gathering places for uh, right-wing reactionary revolutionaries. They're, yeah, yeah. This, that's what, you know, they wanted to find out what Republicans thought. Going to DJ's is, is uh, fish in a barrel. Yeah, it really oh, no. is. And so... Last week we were prescient, but we weren't kidding. This we no, this place yeah. really is is half a mile from where we live, and yeah. uh, walking I, distance easily. Yeah, if you yes. are a national uh, newspaper and you really need a column about what local Trump voters think in Trump country, you really just need to ask. I'll go ask them for you. Now I will write <laughs> it up in my own way, which is making fun of them and wondering about their mental abilities and it, when exactly <laughs> they fell off the wagon. But I'll write it up. Uh, I, I believe I'm I'm as one with Evie Mistal uh, in this oh, way. Oh, you need to bring out that tweet. Yeah. That, I I pointed that out to you yeah. that you two are peas in a pod in this one. Yeah, yeah. Evie Mistal, who who is on MSNBC and has a column in various places and is widely respected, and I think is very funny. And and he and I share a lot of sort of um, writing sarcasm DNA. I think that's very right. Big. Right. But I sort of he, he touched my heart when he said, and I quote, I'm starting to feel like the best thing I could do for my TV career would be to go back in time, be wrong for my entire life and only realize the right thing to do when Donald Trump became president. Then TV would love me. I all I can say is amen, brother. A mm -hmm. fucking man, brother. I, I sat with my wife and talked about this for quite some time. And I said, look, I'm a I'm a, as good or better a writer modestly than anyone else writing politics today i'm 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 i have no illusions about that i'm very good at that i'm six foot eight i'm a middle-aged white guy and i have a soothing radio voice and a, a face you could put on television that has been on television before if i just 20 years ago had decided to go in with team evil i would be pirate rich by now I would oh, be crazy rich by now. Absolutely. I'd be a speechwriter and then I'd be a spokesperson. I'd be on television every fucking week. And then 
suddenly you'd be, you'd be a member of rick wilson's purple brigade well, I, would. I, mean, I absolutely would i would be i would be a member of that crew i'd be a never trumper i'd suddenly come to my senses when it was t- far too fucking late to undo the damage i'd done and start raising money off of you know i was an arsonist for 20 years but please fund my hey fires are bad brigade now that i figured out that i can make money doing that so right, right. Um, it is absolutely a common lament among those of us, I, I'm sure Charlie Pierce feels, feels somewhat the same way, that re, it, it really is this easy. It really is. If you were right all along, the media wants nothing to do with you because it's embarrassing. Well, you're, you're not a story. No, you're, you're not well, a redemption story. Well, you, right? you, you're, a, you're a story, but the story is, hey, asshole, how did you get this wrong for 20 years? Yeah. And yeah. nobody they wants – They don't want to hear that. They don't want to hear that, especially yeah. when their friends are people – other people like that in the press. They don't want to hear that. Why the hell was Chuck Todd swapped out for David Gregory? David Gregory sucked, and then Chuck Todd came in, and he sucks in the same way, and now he's an award-winning journalist. People don't want to hear that. People who work in the building or literally work in that bubble don't want to hear how completely wrong they have been for all along. They want to hear a redemption story about a young man who was in Florida who just wanted to throw shit at Democrats. And you know, that's all I wanted to do with my life. I'm really good at one thing. I'm really good at hating people. Rick Wilson is really good at hating people. He's gifted at that. And he made a lot of money hating people like me for 20 fucking years, calling us names, calling us traitors, calling us monsters. And now he's trying to make money hating the people he used to tell us to hate. And I, he's getting away with it, and and the rest of them are too, because that's a redemption story. That's a fun story, and and he has, and they all have lots of friends in the liberal media who will blurb their books and promote them, etc. Nobody wants to hear from the people who said, "Look, we called this twenty years ago. How the hell did you not see this? Were you too stupid to see it? What was happening right in front of you? I, I saw it. I'm just an idiot in the cornfield with a blog, or didn't you care?" Was the money so good that you just didn't give a shit that you were serving evil all this time? And that's the question, a simple question I've asked of every never Trumper, and I've never gotten an answer. The closest- so I want to see, I want to see, because I think Rick T- Wilson for for Team Evil, as uh-huh. Team Evil went, yep. I think he does have his finger on the pulse of Republican voters. Oh, he does. I think he knows how to how to turn them on with fear and anger. He does. And uh, so I want him to take that million dollars he's already raised for his purple, uh, whatever he's calling it, because mm-hmm. um, these never Trumpers have gotten together now and they're going to do a thing to unseat Trump. That's their and they've had interviews sure. all over MB, MSNBC for this right this week. I want him to spend that money when it's Warren or Sanders as the nominee. Yeah. I want to see that. I want to well, see him do that. Well, there's there's a there's a flaw in their reasoning that again, if, mm-hmm. if I ever had the ability to talk to these people one on one without them blocking me immediately, which is what mm-hmm. they always do. Um, it's very simple. It's remember that Steve Martin routine about you know you want to how to how to be a millionaire and never pay taxes. Right, right. First, get a million dollars. Then, <laughs> okay. So the secret to Rick Wilson and and uh, people like him, their electoral genius is first get a party full of bigots and imbeciles who can be led around by the nose. And all you have to do is show a Willie Horton, yeah. and it's oh, oh, it's oh, easy. Oh. You get you yeah. get Fox yeah. News and you get Rush Limbaugh turning these people voluntarily into a mob of fucking racist zombies for twenty years. So Rick Wilson comes along, and what does he do? He sells crack to crackheads. Yeah. Now that's yeah. a great electoral strategy when your whole party are bigots and imbeciles. How does that translate exactly into a party that isn't that way? Yeah. And the answer yeah. is, give me a million dollars, and I'll tell you. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah. So okay, great. Okay, drift class. You yes. know what? Move I on. need Move I need a on. palate cleanser. <laughs> yeah. Well, so uh, let's read some letters from yeah. some listeners this week because it is the week of Christmas and uh, uh, a holiday week for lots of people. It's it's tomorrow is the last day of Zappadan. It if is. You celebrate nothing else. Celebrate. Remember, tomorrow is the twenty first is Frank Zappa's birthday, mm-hmm. day zero of Zappadan. So. Uh, be sure to light a candle or light something in well, honor I mean, of, of I'd like Frank add, Zappa. I'd like to add one more thing, just very yeah. briefly. I'd, we'd like to thank again Jay Rosen for being our guest last week. Oh, yeah. A lot of good feedback on that. And, Wonderful and feedback. And we will be doing more shows like that in mm-hmm. the coming year. Absolutely. Yes. Uh, all right. So we have a couple letters to read. Uh, Drift Glass, why don't you start with the letter that came today via email all right. from Anthony. Anthony? 
You two are often an inspiration to me, and I would have to credit you a little bit with one of my biggest life choices. Back in May, my wife and I packed up and moved from Oakland, California to Wisconsin. Her family lives throughout southern Wisconsin, which is what initially drew us there, but given a chance to organize in a state that will really matter in 2020 also helped. For context, we've spent our voting lives in Massachusetts, Maryland, and California, so our votes have never really mattered in the past. Now that we are in Wisconsin, I'm dedicating my next 11 months to making sure Trump can no, can do no further harm to this country. Good for you, man. Seeing you and your class fight the good fight on a weekly basis, even with the standard hurdles of life thrown in front of you, really was an inspiration for me. I'm in a stable place, and we have a borderline fascist in the White House. If not now, when? I will admit that I was one of those smug people who didn't do much in 2016 because Hillary was obviously going to beat the racist, sexist, self-aggrandizing, uneducated, hateful, unread, homophobic bigot. I'm not going to let that happen again. Keep up the good work. I'm looking forward to hearing you two later today. Best wishes, Anthony. P.S. Junior Dude also deserves some credit since if he can take time out of college to knock on doors, I can take time out of my career to help save our democracy. Yeah. He, yeah. he is knocking doors in, in Iowa. Uh, he is. Has done it several times for mm-hmm. Elizabeth Warren. It's, that's his choice. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm just so proud of him. Yes. So, yeah. Um, well, and you and he were out on the couch last night watching the debate. Watching the debate. It, we did watch like, the debate. Just like you, the two of you, I would imagine, used to watch Sesame Street. Um, <laughs> yes. You know, and Tinky Winky, whatever the hell the show Tinky that was. Tinky Winky. We, we, yeah. we, he was a big Teletubbies fan. Yeah. yeah. Now you're both uh, out watching the debate. And then I have a couple of letters. We get letters from all over the country. This one is from a listener in Wasilla, Alaska. Oh. However, yes. Hello, DG and BG. Enclosed is a token of my appreciation for all that you do to maintain my sanity. I can't tell you how many times you get letters <laughs> like that. Uh, I so look forward to your podcast every week. We in Alaska are done with our tundra Trump of a governor. Oh and are fixing to recall him. Good. The Republican poison has reached all the way north. I hope we can stop it before it kills us. Many thanks. Thank you for that letter. And then we got a letter from an anonymous. She does not want us to use any names or any location, but she's from the western part of the country. And she says, hello, pod people. I have my donating pen out this (laughs) morning, and you guys are at the top of the (laughs) list. Thank you. I so appreciate your strong, funny, righteous, knowledgeable, outraged, benighted, amused, empathetic, clear-eyed, supportive. Here, let me go fetch my thesaurus. (laughs) Oh, okay, no. You catch my drift. But most of all, I'm shouting here, your positive voices in these very strange times we are in. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for that letter. And we do try to stay positive. It is not always easy, but we do try to stay positive and... uh, uh, give our listeners hope for the future. I I want to stay that way. And, uh, you know, we carry Drift Glass along in his Irish uh, <laughs> yeah. anger. Junior Dude was here at home this weekend, he uh, this week, and he's now heading out uh, to see his dad in Alabama. And we wish him a safe drive down to Alabama. It's, it's hard to let my 21-year-old get in a car and drive that I far, know. but uh, he'll get he'll get there okay. We have a couple other things that we want to discuss. First of all, I am in charge at Crooks and Liars of the Crookie Awards. Uh Uh-huh. And the Crookie Awards are our year-end awards. We do good guy awards and and bad guy awards and special media awards for people that are particularly egregious. Mm -hmm. We noted today, courtesy of Charlie Pierce, that uh, the Pointer School for Journalism and Democracy has named Chuck Todd Media Personality of the Year, and they mean it in a good way. This was not an ironic award. This is a legitimate award. (laughs) And I had passed over Chuck Todd as being not the worst, Mm -hmm. because in my personal opinion, we need to save a lot of awards for Laura Ingram. Oh, yeah. No, absolutely. Uh, You know, Laura Ingram, who said, look... And literally said, attempted bribery is not in the yeah. Constitution, Nancy Pelosi. <laughs> well, there, there, and there, there, I really do think there need to be two awards. The first is for evil, and that would be Fox uh-huh. News. Pretty much everyone on Fox News. I don't care what your job yeah. is. If you work for Fox News, you work for evil. So, and I just, 
you guys at Crooks and Liars, um, you you men and women who heroically wade through this sludge every single day, uh, do yeoman's work. Um, the the problem is I've already written off that entire branch of our country. It's just like, uh-huh. no, you're all dead to me. I, every single one of you, I don't care how much you occasionally twinkle. There's a twinkle in Chris Wallace's eye and he redeems himself a little bit. That's great. That's wonderful. But really, you're you're still rooted in a, a fundamentally despicable organization that is organized to provide a sexual predator petting zoo for the owner of the organization who's now dead. Right. And to to spew incredibly racist lies 24 7 to a, a a bunch of nitwits and bigots and, and lunatics who desperately need that needle of hatred straight into their heart so there needs to be one well and i also think drift guys not sorry to interrupt you but i also think that at this point it is a conscious brainwashing oh, yeah, yeah. exercise they have to stay they they are they have to stay stupid the, well and and Chucker Carlson last night saying, I mean, this is right after impeachment right. and having a million other things to cover, spending a segment of his show talking about how airports forced you to watch for- CNN. Forced you. It is programming. It is programming holiday travelers who watch Fox to walk through the airport without looking right. up. Never look up. To keep them Sheep. from seeing any po- for any possibility of seeing negative right. Trump news. So you have one set of, yeah. you have one branch of the, it's the media. Yeah, we'll, not, we won't call them press, the media, which is solely and exclusively devoted to keeping Republicans lobotomized, terrified, mm-hmm. um, right. pigged up and pointed at the polls and buying shit. And then you have another branch of legitimate journalists, legitimate journalism uh, that enables all that shit. That that puts right. that says you know what we got to give half of our table to these idiots. So we're not going to give uh, uh, Tucker Carlson a place at uh, at the table, but we're going to you know the National Review, sure. Rich Lowry, yes, he gets to come on Meet the Press. Hugh Hugh, yes, he gets to come on Meet the Press. The, these dingbats from the American Enterprise Institute who lie just as badly at Fox News, yes, we're going to give them half, and that is Chuck Todd's job. His job is to enable mm-hmm. the evil that exists by by telling his audience through word and deed that their opinion is pretty much just as good as the other side's opinion. And that deserves a special kind of award for quizzling, for enabling, for knowingly enabling evil by, by equating it with the opposite of it uh, in every fucking time he opens his mouth. That's Chuck's job. And I think I, think I got a really uh, good lesson last yes, we week did. with the Jay Rosen on – why this is you know why is there he said she said journalism yes. why is it uh both sides why is it this commonality of you know because they have to get a story out every single yes. day and so there's this shorthand and this they, there's these go-to what do you call it I, th- I think he calls it the the press's prozac both sides is the prozac you know it's just how you get the story out um I want to talk about impeachment. For Please a moment. talk about it for two moments. Um, <laughs> particularly the uh, process of watching the impeachment debate and watching a Democrat stand up and give fact after fact after oh, yeah. fact. And this yeah. is what happened. This is what the president did. And then you get all of these Rep- Republican backbenchers. And this is something that Chris Hayes pointed out. I had not thought about it before. But Chris Hayes said, you know, we got to see the entire House of Representatives on the Republican side, and they are all white, and most of them are men. And it really was stark how divided the country is between white male patriarchy, conservatism, and everybody else. The Democratic Party has to represent everybody else. And so when you then when you have a debate that's all white people and and Yang, you know, and that's it. Six white people and Andrew Yang. Uh, the burden of having to explain that on uh, the Democratic Party, the burden is on the Democratic Party to represent mm-hmm. everybody because because the Republican Party has chosen not to. That really is that was stark to me. Um, also, the fact that so many of those backbenchers are really uh, lukewarm yeah. IQ. Is that is that well, a kind the, way to put it? There's this scene from Citizen Kane where Charles Foster Kane standing in front of a hall of mirrors, and it's just it's just mm-hmm. his own image reflected 
over and over and over again to identity. That's the Republican Party. Mm -hmm. It's it, mm -hmm. it is a is a replicated virus mm -hmm. of hatred and racism and and just unhinged rage and stupidity, just fucking bone deep stupidity stamped out of the same mold over and over and over and over again. They're, they're all identical. They all are the same. And you're right. Everyone else. Well, and I don't think it was that. I don't think that that was that no. different when we were little. I think backbenchers in the Democratic and Republican Party have always been kind of yeah. male used car salesmen who, you know, have, have hair parted on the side and can wear a blue suit and, uh, hold up a gigantic check to has, open up a bridge you know that it that none of that requires a huge amount but the country of has changed since then. but the country mm -hmm. has changed yes that's the point and the mm -hmm. republican party has changed and it is no longer just uh you know i'm a salesman and i can sell that i can sell myself as a stable representative yeah. of a district you now have to represent the pathology that is presented by fox news right every single day and that warps everything this great centrifuge has been applied to our political process and it has purified right. the right into its essential element which is yeah. reactionary mm -hmm. ignorant white supremacists that's who they are and everything else around them is a refraction of that. Their obsession with guns, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, their obsession mm -hmm. with this creepy form of fake Christianity. It's all part of the same continuum. And so they have purified themselves and mm -hmm. everything, every other thought has been purged from the party. So everybody else has to go into the other party. This is why, you know, we have said many times that if the Republican Party disappeared tomorrow, there would still be two parties. There would be the Pete Buttigieg Republican Party or the right party, which is, you know, wants to argue about marginal tax rates and stuff. There'd, and there'd be the left party. Well, and, and, to, and to be fair, it would be the Hillary Clinton party, too. Yeah. Oh, no, it would absolutely be. It would be the Barack Obama party. Center left, centrist, centrist ish, and whatever yeah. is left of the right wing in the Democratic Party would all be that there. Would yeah. Absolutely be there. And then there'd be the Bernie Sanders, uh, Elizabeth Warren wing of the party. And there'd be these grown up arguments about really important things. Mm -hmm. And we'd have. Mm -hmm massive debates that wouldn't involve calling people fucking Pocahontas. Yeah, right. It would actually involve policy issues. Right. And we'd get someplace. We'd actually have a healthcare system that we'd argue about what's the best way to get maximum health number of people covered under any system. All right, you, you, that's yeah. a perfect dovetail into the, the gift. And I'm, I am going to, <laughs> for my own sanity, insist in my own oh. mind that this is a gift to the Democratic Party and leave it at that. And I'm not going to... Sure. Uh, pursue no. this court case in my mind any further than that because it upsets me so much. But uh, yeah. um, the federal appeals court ruled that the Affordable Care Act's individual mandate was unconstitutional, but they, uh, you know, punted on invalidating the entire law and ordered a lower court judge to evaluate whether other provisions of the law can survive without the mandate. In the meantime, the attorney general of California has gone ahead and sued uh, to end this uncertainty uh, for all of us. And, yes. uh, so this fight is on and, mm -hmm. um, it is a shame that we have to have this fight. This was a stupid unconstitutional ruling, very, uh, un illegal, uh, in my personal opinion, and in the opinion of a lot of legal scholars, uh, ruling that the Texas court had. And, uh, so this, our healthcare is under threat. Right. And as I said, I refuse to discuss this, even in my own head, as anything but a gift to Democrats in an election year. We yes. we won yes. on this in 2018, and we're going to win on this in 2020. And mm -hmm. uh, there are already some very, very good ads out. I saw one today that had in the background Cory Gardner <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the the senator from Maine, uh, Susan Collins. Susan Collins. Yeah. Is she is she concerned she's or concerned. disturbed? She's concerned. She's concerned, concerned. about That's it. Important. Yeah. You know. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is a gift to to uh, hopefully take back the Senate over this because I I should hope it's so. it's time it's time to end this nonsense and recognize that healthcare is uh, a human right in the United States well, and, and everywhere, but. That's the and that's that's what the separation of the parties has resulted in. One party throws a beer bust in the rose garden right. when it thinks it has finally fucked over 
tens of millions of Americans and taken away their health care. They're thrilled by that. They like inflicting suffering on weak people, mm -hmm. on poor people, mm -hmm. on middle class people. They like doing that. This is not an accident. Mocking Joe Biden's stutter right. by, by Sarah Huckabee isn't an accident. These are malicious, sadistic, horrible people. And people who vote credit, for them, she deleted that tweet and apologized when she was corrected. Yeah. But how dumb do you have to be? You're, you were press secretary of the United States, president of the United States, and uh -huh. and you're that dumb. And and also, didn't you re retire? Aren't you out of office? Why do you feel well, like you need to tweet attacks on Democratic candidates that are, well, that are patently false? I mean, it's just a attacking. Dumb Attacking your smoky eye look. Yeah. That was that was uh that was a bridge too far. And saying you couldn't have that cheese plate, that was a bridge too far. <laughs> but going after people for their disabilities, that's just funny. That's just fucking and the thing was she didn't understand why it wasn't funny no, I, until someone it. hit her over the head with it because she's Mike Huckabee's wretched offspring. Yeah. And, and, and Nancy that's Pelosi said part. that about uh Trump talking about Representative Dingle from hell and so forth yeah. and all that crap was yeah. he doesn't These understand are... the difference between wit and cruelty. And she's absolutely yeah. right. And that's one and the, uh, that's one party that celebrates the thought of of taking health care away from tens of millions of our fellow citizens, right. including us. Right. The other party is arguing over what's the best way to provide it. And I, it is very important. I, I, I take your point and I'm going to share it with you, which is I take this as a gift to Democrats. But if you are so removed from the problems of people that you still think that fighting over Medicare for all or public option, that's where the fight. No, the fight is between people who want to take it away and people who want to provide more. It's that simple. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. if, if you if you are busy arguing over how many co-pays can dance on the head of a pin, you're going to miss the big picture. Yeah. And that's the only thing that concerns me is that you're going to get so fussy and precious about whose plan and which punctuation mark is going to be, is going to, we're going to run with is you're going to forget that the other party is evil yep. and you need to mention that. Well, and, and that's that, our job. And, and that is the yeah. democratic party's job this year is to point out the stark difference on health care between the two parties. And if you well, if, and I realize primary fights are messy and this is the uh -huh. only the only way to accomplish uh the choice, I guess, is uh you know small differences. Finding finding that little pin that's the difference between the two candidates or the three well, candidates and, or the seven candidates. And this is where uh Mayor Pete has um, left a bit of a bad taste in my mouth. Yeah, well, and and I have to say also um, Amy Klobuchar as well. Same thing. It, uh, well, the, the reason Mayor Pete is, even today, he t retweeted what he said in the debate last night, mm -hmm. which was, if your religious values teach you to protect, uh, not to protect the marginalized, feed the hungry, et cetera, you're not required to condone what's going on in Washington. He said the same thing last night. The, what's going on in Washington? Yeah. As if... Pointing out that it's the fucking Republicans is so is like the third rail of politics. Yeah, yeah. You're not allowed to mention that there's another party run by lunatics who are trying to kill us all. Yeah. And and he is so terrified of mentioning Donald Trump's name and the Republican Party's name because because he's real these desperate people who believe somehow there's some little sliver of people in the middle who, who we can vacuum up if we just don't mention that the Republican Party is run by despicable people. Well, and, and he, he's I just running like, a local election in Indiana. Indiana, so, right. I mean, right. he does probably does have Republicans that have voted for that nice young gay boy, you know, right. uh, who vote because as mayor, they were willing to do that, but they're still voting for Donald Trump. So he's, well, but, he's trying to please them from the standpoint of locally still remaining mayor and also right. as a presidential candidate. It, it's the same mistake uh, Barack Obama made. Yeah. Thinking yeah. that that national Republican politics were like local Illinois Republican polls he knew when he was in the state Senate. Yeah. That, oh, these are guys you play poker with and you have a drink and you work shit out. No. And and it's fine if if you're Barack Obama and you go to Washington in the middle of a tremendous crisis, you know, crashing economy, wars, et cetera, et cetera, and you're there to fix things. You're like, let's all stop fighting and fix this shit. Yeah. And you're naive enough to believe that Republicans are not going to stab you in the back. Right. Right. At, at around 2010, that level of naivete became inexcusable. Well, now, and it's that's 2019. What I think about, that's what I think about Amy Klobuchar, which is yeah. she's not 
understanding that you are running in a goddamn Democratic primary. Right. And stop right. pretending that your selling point is I'm going to get Republicans to vote for me. That was the Biden thing, too. Yeah, it Joe is, Biden yeah. really still believes that somehow the Republican Party, the magic Republican Party, the Republican Party of Tip O'Neill and Ronald Reagan is going to is going to rise from the grave and become his partners in fixing problems. There is no such reasonable. Ask Republican the dreamers party. about that. You know, ask yeah. the dreamers if getting Republicans to vote for you is really the way to go. Um, yeah. OK, moving on, moving on. Uh, shall we talk about uh, shall we talk about uh, our local media or not? no? Let's talk about Christianity Today first for just a moment. Yes, yes. <laughs> uh, yes. Because Christianity Today uh, was in favor of removal for it's a magazine. It's a magazine. It's, it, a, it's a magazine. it's a it's a religious magazine uh, for mainline Protestant denomination. I would say that's I don't read it so, uh, but I'm aware of it, and it is not a political magazine. Let me they say that, but. When uh, it was clear that Bill Clinton was going to be impeached, uh, Christianity Today came out in favor of removing him as president because uh, he did fail to meet up to the moral standard of being president of the United States. Right. And so they have come out uh, in favor of Trump's removal as yes. from the office of president, and they are being absolutely consistent. Uh, they said it's time to call a spade a spade to say that no matter how many hands we win in this political poker game— we are playing with a stacked deck of gross immorality and ethical incompetence. Mm -hmm. a near, he, Donald Trump is a near perfect example of a human being who is morally lost and confused. If we don't reverse course now, will anyone take anything we say about justice and righteousness with any seriousness for decades to come? Um, mm -hmm. They also asked Christians uh, who you are and who you serve. Yeah. And so this has gotten a lot of people really upset. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it sure has. Uh, including Donald Trump, who said he was never going to read E.T. again. <laughs> never. Never. Which is entertainment tonight. <laughs> yeah. Uh, never. But The but ratings this, on this magazine just suck. They're terrible. Yeah. The loser, fake Christianity, fake news today. The thing that I just want to remind everyone is that evangelicals are Donald Trump's favorite supporters and vice yeah. versa. The reason being is that both sides understand completely that this is transactional. And this is yeah. exactly what Donald Trump likes. Donald Trump doesn't give a shit whether someone's a true Christian or not. He cares whether they are truly for Donald Trump or against Donald Trump. And that's the only yeah. way he divides people in the world. He divides people between you're for me or against me because he's a narcissist. So he made a deal with the evangelicals that they totally took up and accepted, which is you will get you your judges and we'll move the embassy to Jerusalem. And so that brings about the second coming of Christ for you guys. So great. You know, <laughs> whether he believes any of it or knows anything about two Corinthians or anything about not anything. That's not no shit about it's it. not about that. No. It's about I'll give you what you want. You give me what I want. And he did that with Ukraine. <laughs> He did that. He's trying to do that with China. And he that is the level at which he understands. Let's make a deal. And that has been the deal. And so for Christianity Today to, to break into that, and they have succeeded, I think, with this editorial in sort of breaking mm -hmm. a mesmerism in, in the media and in uh, Christian circles, because there's a lot of very upset people on Facebook, particularly, uh, uh, you know, Franklin Graham came on Facebook and did this four paragraph screed about, you know, supporting Donald Trump no matter what, because we want Jesus. And and the, I read the comment threads. It was praying for the president, praying for Jesus, praying for this, praying for that. And it, it is as if calling into question that trade off mm -hmm. uh, has has snapped people out of the laziness that they were in. in. Um, yeah. that doesn't mean that they're, they're, you're, anybody's going to get anywhere that we're going to move any needles really, but it has snapped people out of this sense of I'm only eat Chick-fil-A and pray to Jesus and love Donald Trump. And that, you know, that will save me. If that doesn't save me, I'm not perfect. I'm just forgiven. Right. I'll, I, you know, I'll, I'll be saved. I'm saved anyway. Yeah, I'm, I'm saved, saved anyway. anyway. So, uh, mm -hmm. no matter what I do, and then I can be a constitutional independent Christian and be all set. Right. So there's always an out. And, you know, I just want to grab these folks by the crucifix and say, <laughs> you're not saved. You're not saved. You're not forgiven. Uh, because as 
Bible bitch says that's not scriptural. Um, no, it's really, really, <laughs> really not. Really not. Really not. No. If you keep on sinning, if you keep on trusting the power of the powers of this world, uh, mm -hmm. you know, it, Paul has a lot to say about this. The the principalities and powers that if, you, if that's where your trust lies, you're in huge trouble. Um, well, and his transactional really sort of yeah. sociopathic transactionalism. Right, right. His just absolute does not understand the difference between um, good and evil. Doesn't no. understand it at all. No. Only no. understands a deal that I that accrues to my benefit. My that's benefit. all he understands. And, and, right. and his 63 million idiots in this country think that's great. You could see that in his seething hatred of John Dingle. Right. That he right. was screaming about how I gave his widow an A plus funeral. Yes, not, a, right. not a B funeral, uh, not a C funeral, A plus funeral. And then she turned on me yeah. because that was my deal. I would allow her husband to be, to be buried in a, in a, a dignified way. As and if that, it was up to him. As, as if, if it was, was up to him. him. Yes. Her job right. is to shut the fuck up and support me. And that's always the deal with Donald Trump is, and because he's a, he's a tyrant, he's a despot. And 63 million idiots in this country desperately want a dictator. Really? I mean, I've said it before, and I will say it again, you cannot underestimate how much conservatives hate this country. They hate this country. They look. They don't look at Vladimir Putin as an accident. They look at him as a role model. They want well, that yeah, guy. Because he's, he's white and male. And strong. And all powerful. Yeah. Right. And rich. And he gets, and it does whatever the hell he wants. Nationalistic states is exactly what conservatives want for America. Yeah. A white ethno nationalist state. Yep. Yes. Drew Glass, we got to read the news roundup. Let's roll, baby. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi won't commit to sending the articles of impeachment against Trump to the Senate unless she sees the process that is set forth to ensure a fair trial. She is playing straight out of the Merrick Garland playbook. Yep. And it's perfect. And Mitch McConnell, who doesn't know what to do with that, mocked right. her threat to withhold those as too afraid to transmit their shoddy work product. Now, really, if you're listening to Mitch McConnell and you're believing anything that comes out of his mouth, consult a physician because you have some sort of brain damage. Mitch McConnell is worse than Donald Trump because he because Donald Trump is just a, a sociopath who doesn't know any better. He's a dumb loud, racist, vulgar shithead. Mitch McConnell is just revels in being evil. He likes being a despicable scumbag. And he's met his match in Nancy Pelosi. He doesn't know how to deal with the fact that she has this one lever and she's using it. And he doesn't know what to do but scream at the same people who are going to go with him no matter what happens. Representative Mark Meadows will not seek re-election to Congress in 2020. It's not clear whether he's going to run for the Senate or run for Trump's chief of staff. We just don't know. Um, I'm going to go to Tulsi Gabbard, uh, okay. who does who did a spectacular imitation of ABC News chief political analyst Matthew Dowd circa 2016 <laughs> by voting present on both counts of impeachment to quote protest against the zero sum game the two opposing political sides have trapped America in. Also because she didn't want to piss off her Moscow handler. Yeah, I'm I'm suspecting that. On impeachment day, co Trump completely lost his shit, sending 45 tweets before noon, hours before the House formally voted to impeach him, calling impeachment a terrible thing. Can you believe that I will be impeached today? I did nothing. <laughs> yeah. All caps. Yeah. I did nothing wrong. Trump urged his followers to, quote, say a prayer. All caps. To him, I, yeah. I would assume. White House press monster Stephanie Grisham told reporters that Trump will be working all day and that he could catch some of the proceedings between meetings. Less than 10 minutes later, Trump tweeted in all caps, such atrocious lies by the radical left do nothing Democrats. This is an assault on America and an assault on the Republican Party for exclamation points. I'm yeah. glad he distinguishes between America and the Republican Party because that's very important. <laughs> um Ambassador Bill Taylor, lifetime honest straight arrow Bill Taylor, is being fired from his job for telling the truth. We all saw that coming, including Ambassador Bill Taylor. Oh, sure. Uh, Trump sent a genuinely deranged six-page letter to Nancy Pelosi denouncing what he called a, quote, partisan impeachment crusade. Uh, he also included this six-page letter in a Christmas card folder 
that was like 10 by 12 giant, giant folders signed in red and then a little card signed in gold and the six page letter. There was no bumper sticker enclosed. <laughs> um, and he mailed it to every member of Congress and every member of the Senate and or delivered it to them. And during the impeachment, this gigantic Christmas card in, with a letter enclosed, and it wasn't a family letter thing. It was his six page screed to Nancy Pelosi. It wasn't a picture of him and his very, very happy family all standing around a Christmas no. tree and looking just relaxed. And oh, no, no, that's Barack Obama. I forgot. Yeah, that's yeah, Barack Obama. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then Trump also claimed that, quote, there was more due process was afforded to those accused in the Salem witch trials. Yeah. Uh, he's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. And he's becoming unraveled in public, which on one hand scares the shit out of me. On the other hand, it is delightful. Um, would you read would you read the, the one that starts before leaving office? Oh yes. Before leaving office, Kentucky's disgraced Republican governor Matt Bevan issued four hundred and twenty eight pardons, a group that includes multiple convicted murderers and sex offenders. When asked Thursday by reporters how he could stomach pardoning a child rapist, Bevan responded which one? Yeah, and and his excuse today was that uh, the nine year old's hymen was intact. Yeah, so she wasn't really. It wasn't you know a it legitimate really rape, rape. It wasn't right? Really it wasn't a legitimate rape. rape. So yeah. I, uh, he he's an evil person, and yeah. Kentucky is well rid of him. Uh, I wanted to talk about Rick Gates. Yeah, go. Yeah. Uh, speaking of witch hunts, uh, former Trump campaign aide Rick Gates was sentenced to 45 days in jail, which will be served on weekends. Uh, he had a $20,000 fine and also 300 hours of community service. Uh, this was interesting because the prosecutor sat in on his sentencing and spoke in his defense. Uh-huh. Uh, he is still helping the <laughs> prosecutors as of now. <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> There's nothing more to say to that except the judge was like, thank you for all your help. I know I won't see you in here in a criminal manner ever Uh again. Uh I wish you well. His wife has cancer. He said, I wish you well. I wish your wife well. And uh, I'm going to go along with what the prosecutors have said, which is you're going to have this lenient sentence. Um, Because let's face it, folks, he helped get Manafort and Roger Stone. Yeah. Yeah. And he's still helping. Yes. So. The, is he a good guy? No. 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 <laughs> is he is he helping and doing everything mm-hmm. that p- prosecutors uh, weigh in a courtroom yes. when they're giving out lenient sentences? And this mm-hmm. is why they do it. Is it a signal to everyone else in government that if you cooperate, you will it will benefit you? And so it you- is really important. I know this sounds like, oh, God, country club. He gets to choose the weekends. He goes into jail, mm-hmm. et cetera. It sounds like it's not justice. It has nothing to do with justice, folks. It has to do with sending a signal to every other whistleblower and every other person who might cooperate, particularly against Trump, mm-hmm. to say, we will treat you fairly and yep. we will make it easy on you if you help us. So that that was really important for them to do. And if and you he's, don't, he's, a tool. he's their tool to do that. If you don't, here's yeah. Paul Manafort to explain here's what Paul happens Manafort, if you don't right. cooperate. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. Watching his health uh, deteriorate in jail. Yeah. Which happens to people who are, yeah. you know, evil. Evil. Uh, and- <laughs> And and have to go to jail and deal with, you know, not having a privileged life anymore. Right. Uh, Donald Trump now claims he does not consider the mass killings of Armenians in 1915 to be genocide after Turkey's authoritarian president threatened to close an air base in Turkey that hosts some of our nukes. Trump called the genocide where 1.5 Armenians were killed, quote, one of the worst mass atrocities of the 20th century in April. But you know how Republicans are. Now we're now we now we're going to change our mind because now we have a better deal. So suddenly, an atrocity is no longer an atrocity because Erdogan is threatening me with closing down my my military base, and that's that. It's it's monstrous. It is. He just flushed 1.5 million human beings down down the memory hole because he wants to cut a deal with a dictator. Mm-hmm. Speaking of bad people, this week, Rudy Giuliani 
he was very helpful. He was. He is a helper. Giuliani is a helper. helper. I don't care what you say. Out of love, as Donald Trump says. Yes. He's helpfully confirming that he needed the U.S. ambassador to Ukraine to get out of the way because she was going to make the investigations difficult for everybody, he said to Laura Ingram on television. I want him to testify so bad. So bad. I just want him to say, well, of course, we had crimes to do. And we had to get people out of the way or the crimes couldn't have gotten done. What is it about that? Don't you understand? Part of fraud guarantee. Do you not understand? (laughs) Uh, The Trump administration is fighting a brand new package of sanctions on Russia, which is designed to punish Russian individuals and companies over the Kremlin's targeting of Ukraine, 2016 election interference, its activities in Syria and its attacks on dissidents. 50% of active duty military personnel have an unfavorable or very unfavorable view of Trump. And some of them listen to this podcast and we want to do a shout out to you guys. Yeah. We love you. We love you very much. I I, I wonder about the sanity of the 50% who think Donald Trump's doing a great job. Or or even um, have no opinion. (laughs) Now, I, I get it. If you're in the military and you've decided you're not going to answer questions like that uh because you're going to focus on your duty to protect. Fine. United States and do your duty as a soldier. Kudos to you. Right. If you're going to just keep your eyes on the prize as someone lower in the rankings, I think high ranking people have a duty to call out Donald Trump. That's my personal I opinion. Couldn't agree more. You know, average soldiers out there in the field, if you're saying, no, I'm I'm not involved in politics, I focus on my duty and, and so forth. Great. A, a group of Republican Trump critics has launched a super PAC to oppose Donald Trump's re-election. It's called the Lincoln Project. No, it's not purple. It's the Lincoln Project. The That's Lincoln right. Project. Yeah. And it's it raised a million dollars so far to support to support their mission. And I don't I'm guessing several million dollars more in free publicity because MSNBC just won't stop talking about it. And I'm on them. four times. Yeah. Right. My right. Only suggestion, uh, because everyone knows where I stand on Never Trumpers, is that if you have been a supporter of the Republican Party, if you've been a Republican stooge or hitman or rat fucker or elected official or anything, if you've been a, a Republican Party person at any point in the last, say, 30 years, you need to keep the name Lincoln out of your fucking mouth. Yep. Absolutely. That's all, all I have to say. Uh, Trump threatened to not participate in the presidential debates. Uh, Trump just made a bunch of shit up about the nonpartisan commission on presidential debates being stacked with Trump haters and never Trumpers. We'll see what happens with that, as Donald Trump said. We'll see what happens. It happens. Uh, Mitch McConnell has promised publicly that he will rig the Senate trial so that there is, quote, no chance that Trump will be removed from office. I'm going to end on a good note because elections have consequences and the Democratic House put gun violence research in the budget where it will stay. For the first time in 20 years. That's Take good. that NRA. And we have some local news. Yeah. Well, at this media panel I went to, there, there's a long story about corruption and Alderman Burke, et cetera. And it's going to unfold over the next year. But I, the biggest news story this year, in the consensus of, of the local media here, the TV, uh, the radio people, uh, local newspaper, is that J.B. Pritzker really did hit the ground running as governor. Uh, he has been such a huge and consequential contrast to Governor Hedge Fund, both in his style and substance. Uh, as you know, our previous governor uh, picked fights for no reason, refused to put in a budget for two years, uh, attacked unions, was just an asshole. Was it a Republican multimillionaire asshole who bought himself the governorship? And, and, and wanted to break the, the unions. He wanted to yeah, break it, the state govern- state worker unions, and he was willing to stop everything else in order to do right. that. That would have been his accomplishment. And that was... And he failed. He failed. The, the Illinois uh, Policy Institute was one of the places he funds. He was a libertarian guy, a yeah. Republican guy, who, yes, his his whole goal was to bust unions. And he failed. And, he, and in doing so, he pissed off everybody. Because he just... Once you shut the budget down for two years, everybody goes broke. Right. The schools fail, roads fail. Restaurants. Fail, I mean, everybody, restaurants. Yeah. Everybody, everybody hates him. And Pritzker really has signed into legislation over the course of one year since he was inaugurated an astonishing amount of stuff. We have a $45 billion infrastructure road project. I was going to say just IDOT alone is amazing. The number of people it's going to put to work, the number of people it's going to number of roads, it's going to actually fix. Uh, If he'd done nothing else, but he's done so much else. He's restored autism funding. He's 
worked with uh, agencies to make sure that they're operating with transparency. Yep. Uh, he, it's remarkable. I, I mean this, you know, I, I realize I'm partisan and everything, but even compared to other Democratic governors, he has really taken on government as a project to make it look like it works for everyone in Illinois. Yeah. And I'm very proud of that. Next um, year, he's going to have uh, his big fight's going to be the progressive income tax. Yeah. Uh, he yeah. has taken apparently $5 million out of his own pocket yeah. to fund an organization to promote this, which is, you know, the Mike Bloomberg strategy times, you know, a fraction of it. But yeah. he's willing to put up his own money to say, we need a progressive income tax in Illinois to pay for yeah. shit. We yep. just need it. And, and, and I'm willing to, to, uh, to lead the charge on that, even though it's very politically unpopular. He might get it. He might not. But he has done a lot. And he, I, I hope he does more. And if he gets two years like this back to back, he'll be governor until he wants to stop being governor. Yeah, that's right. That's right. It's, it's, it's amazing. It, it it really is. He has transformed state government uh, to something that we can all be proud of. And exactly. and that is a hard thing to do in an industrial, mobbed up, you know, often corrupt. Often corrupt. <laughs> often the, corrupt, gerrymandered, democratic state. It is. Yeah. It's just, you know, that's what it is. I'm not, I'm not denying that. Uh, but the transparency part of it has been really remarkable. And, and then the investment, you know, investing in people and investing mm -hmm. in roads and bridges and making sure things work. That's mm -hmm. really been what he's wanted to do and he's done it. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Each week we post to our Facebook page and website, an internet kitty sent in by you, the listeners. This is purely kismet. I did not, I, I take these in order as they come in and internet kitty, the internet kitty this week is St. Nicholas. I swear. I didn't, arrange this saint nicholas that's his real name enough said you go visit saint nicholas at our facebook page and website and of course saint nicholas demands freshly poured cat food our fake sponsor whether you ser serve pet store perfection or dollar store direct your pet will sit on the kitchen floor and demand that the food they eat is only freshly poured freshly poured freshly poured oh my lord it's freshly poured Fa la 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 la. <laughs> you can visit again Saint Nicholas at our Facebook page and website. He's a beautiful kitty. And you can send your internet kitty or other pet to us at our email address, proleftpodcast at gmail.com, where you can also write to both of us. Feel free to write us. We love hearing from you. Be aware that if you write us at any of our addresses, we reserve the right to read your email or, and let's say it together, U.S. Postal Service. Go, Go Postal, Postal Unions. Unions. Letter on the air, unless you say otherwise. Don't forget our gourmet coffee guideline. If you can afford to buy an espresso-based beverage for yourself, buy one for us. You know, we have youngest child. She just loves peppermint mocha. That's like oh, her God. thing. Oh, God. I I can't wait for that season to be over because the smell is just, I don't like that. But she loves it. So if you can afford to buy... Uh, a mocha peppermint mocha if you can afford to buy those kind of drinks for yourself buy one for us we have lots of options on our website including one called buy me a coffee mm -hmm. it's a little coffee cup on our website and that just lets you donate five bucks really quickly and feel free to do that this is not charity this is our job and it's a labor of love we love you happy holidays merry christmas we'll be back next week for uh our new year show but yes. uh, we, we love you very much and wish you all very, very happy. Approximately 1% of our listeners support this podcast with a contribution, and you can too. See our website, proleftpod.com, for details. We have PayPal, postal address, buy us a coffee, all kinds of goodies there, including merch at proleftpod.com. Please share our show on social media, and thank you so much for doing that. Thanks for all the feedback on the Jay Rosen Show. Thank you for Jay Rosen for uh, doing that show with us. And uh, again, we love you. Merry, Merry Christmas. Merry, Merry uh, Zappadan and happy holidays. Hey, Drift Glass, how are the Internet Kitties doing this week? Blue Gal, the Internet Kitties are right now down at DJ Cafe waiting for the next round of interviews. Let's think about living. Let's think about loving. Let's think about the hooping and the hopping and the bopping and the loving, loving, dubbing. Let's forget about the wine and the crying, the shooting and the dying, and the fellow with a switchblade knife. Let's think about living. 
Let's think of our life. The Professional Left Podcast is recorded under a Creative Commons license. Copyright 2019-2020, DGBG Productions.